Ladies and gentlemen, this RedGamingTech.com video, we have some news regarding the Wii U. It's been a fairly turbulent time recently for Nintendo and their console, as you guys may be aware. They've had issues with sales figures, and of course they're trying a new approach when it comes to the marketing of the console, and I don't think they've completely ironed that out. However, for Wii U owners, there are a couple of pieces of bad news. The first comes with games they're going to be missing out on. Just today, EA, Electronic Arts, have revealed that we're going to be missing out on 15 games for the Wii U, which are going to be using the Frostbite Free Engine. Now, the Frostbite Free Engine is, of course, the successor to the Frostbite 2 Engine. And it's well known that the Frostbite 2 Engine alone had issues working on the Wii U. That's not to say that you couldn't get it working on the Wii U, and indeed they did get it working on the Wii U, but it was it wasn't ideal, is basically what it comes down to. And the Frostbite Free uh, Frostbite Free Engine, I'm sorry, is going to be a number of big titles. It's going to be used on Battlefield 4, Mass Effect 4, Dragon Age 3, and as well as a new Star Wars title, although that hasn't been announced yet as to what that one is. Now, this has been announced by a series of Twitter feeds from the technical director of DICE, Joanne Anderson, and he'd explained that the Frostbite 2 engine wasn't running well on the Wii U, so they just abandoned the efforts to get its successor working. And he's tweeted, and I quote, FB3 has never been running on Wii U. We did some tests with not too promising results for FB2, and chose not to go down that path, end quote. This, of course, also means that not only are you going to be losing those games as well, you're going to be losing big titles such as Army of Two, The Devil's Cartel, uh, Need for Speed 2013, as well as a few others. So that's pretty bad. Um, there have been uh, numerous other reports as well. Now, to begin with, it seemed like the Unreal 4 engine wasn't going to be able to work on the Wii U. However, Epic Games then went ahead and commented and said that, you know what, it's actually possible to get um, Unreal Engine 4 working on the Wii U. Unfortunately, they're going to have to actually um, go ahead and cut some of the content out. In other words, um, shall we say, lessen the detail and so forth. In other words, you're going to have to really make some drastic cuts to make the engine function on the hardware. Remember that the, uh, the actual these two engines, um, including Crytek engine, now Crisis 3, as far as I'm aware, was actually going to be working on the Wii U. But the reason they didn't actually do it was because of Nintendo, from what I understand. There was a deal that fell through. We'll go through that in a moment. But in regards to the actual engine, they could make it work. However, of course, just like the Xbox 360 and PS3, there would be a number of compromises compared to, say, the PC version. Now, the Unreal 4 engine, I'm just going to call it Unreal Engine just for the sake of brevity, was also working, of course, on the PlayStation 4. However, there were a number of cuts, shall we say, for the PS4 engine. Um... Mostly to do with lighting, however, there were a few other bits and pieces, including the textures. Bear in mind that they haven't actually finished it on the PlayStation 4, but from what I understand from Epic, they are going to make these cuts permanently just because of the hardware. Uh, you guys can actually check that video out, incidentally, if you want to find the links to any of this stuff, incidentally. I've already done an article on this, and I'd highly encourage you to read it. Um, because not only have I linked to the PlayStation 4 video that I just mentioned, you've also got all the links to all of the various uh, sources and references and so on. So I, I try to do that as whenever as possible, just so you guys can further research it yourself or, you know, whatever. And sometimes, as I said before, I cover certain aspects I haven't. So what else have we been hearing? Well, not only has the Frostbite 3 engine um, been having some issues, then we talk about the Wii U development kits. Now, Avalanche Studios, which are a Swedish independent um, developer, have no plans to develop for uh, the Wii U at present. And indeed, they were speaking to a Swedish website, which was then translated by the Escapist. Uh, there's all links to this in the article I've wrote. And 
basically they were talking about why they are not going to be developing for the Wii U. And I'll read the quote. We actually had some development kits that just collected dust. It's a bit sad because we wanted to do something. I think it's a cool platform, but right now it's just not up to us. We want the game to reach as many as possible. So this is fairly familiar territory. This is end quote, by the way. You get into this vicious circle where to get people to buy the console, you need to convince them that the consoles are worth it, and the best way to do that, to be honest with you, is the games, right? But the problem with the games is that, well, there needs to be the people that are buy the console. And so if the people aren't buying the console, games developers won't support the console so well. And what happens if the games developers aren't supporting the console? That's right, there's less games, and therefore less people are going to buy the console. You see how the vicious circle works. And this has been one of the things that's been biting not only the Wii U in ass recently, but it's happened throughout history for consoles. The Saturn, as you guys have been aware, I'm kind of a Saturn aficionado. Uh, I wouldn't say maybe a f well, yeah, I love the Saturn to be honest with you, but also it ha it's happened to many other systems as well, the Dreamcast as well, and to a slight lesser extent the N64, um, because just how much of an monopoly the PlayStation 1 had. But there have been a number of other consoles. Now, obviously, Nintendo are not in the circle to the degree where they cannot recover. They are making some headway, but we'll go into that in a second. Now, what about what other bits and pieces are there? Well, he's also said he's found uh, Nintendo difficult to reach and you never know quite who to contact. This is another problem that we'll discuss in a second as well. I'm sure many of you guys will be familiar with the little game known as Crisis 3. And indeed, Crytek, who of course are the developers for Crisis 3, started to actually get it working on the Wii U. In fact, they actually had it running on the Wii U, and they even said it looked pretty nice as well. I'm not going to get into the whole PlayStation 3 versus uh, Xbox versus Wii U graphics debate in this, but supposedly, I haven't seen the actual footage or anything, but they did actually have the game running absolutely fine, and they said it looked quite nice. However, they couldn't publish it, and this was pretty much the, the quote. In fact, this is the quote. We did have Crisis 3 running on Wii U. We were very close to launching it, but there was lack of business support between Nintendo e and EA on that. So since we are a company that couldn't launch on the Wii U by ourselves, we don't have a publishing license. Crisis 3 on the Wii U had to die. It's a very, 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 very odd state of affairs, in my opinion. Because, quite simply put, Nintendo, from these couple of quotes, it's obvious they are not supporting the publishers as well, or should I say developers as well as they should be. There has been recent rumours that have been stating that they're actually trying to develop something that is going to allow certain smartphone games to actually run on the Wii U hardware, though just how well that's going to work and so on, once again up in the air. But honestly speaking, that's all nice and all fantastic and all that good stuff, but I really think Nintendo needs to understand that they need to better support the developers. Um, because, once again, I know I sound like a bit of a broken record here, but it's not just a case of you wooing gamers. Now, I think one of the issues is that Nintendo are really focused heavily on their own first-party stuff. And that's absolutely fine. I think that when we see Zelda and we see the new Mario and everything else running, on the Wii U. We'll be really happy and excited and so on. But the reality is you can't just run your games uh, on the system and expect people to buy that system because once again it's a simple issue. If I've never been interested in Mario, if I've never been that interested in Zelda, if I've never been interested in Metroid Prime, for example, let's say that you're, you know, let's say that you know a friend called Tom and Tom has never ever owned a Nintendo system and the only time he really sees these games is infrequently when he comes around your house or whatever. The fact of the matter is, he may look at that and he'll say to you, you know what, it looks cool, but I'm not 
prepared to buy a Wii U for that. He doesn't understand because he's not played, um, you know, the previous Mario Brothers or Mario 64 or Ocarina of Time, and you get the idea by now. In other words, there is no legacy there. And imagine he's like that. So imagine someone who's never played it. On the other hand, you see something like the PlayStation 4. And once again, it goes into this vicious circle. People, most people anyway, obviously there are exceptions to the rule. But most people just buy one to two consoles because of a couple of reasons. One, financially speaking, it doesn't make sense to own two or three systems. The biggest reason as well is obviously you have to buy games for all those systems. But on top of that as well, most people don't really have the time to play all these games. Obviously, if you're at a certain age, you might. But other than that, especially if you're working on someone, and obviously if you're working, you're more likely to be able to afford the system. But then you've got the other issue where it's the old joke of you've got more money, but you don't have so much time. And so in this case, you're probably only going to buy one or two consoles unless you, you know, really want to for some reason. Therefore, you're going to look at the competitors of the Wii U and you're going to say, hmm, well, I like the look of X, Y, and Z on the Wii U, but I also like the look of X, Y, Z, B, and A, and all the other letters of the alphabet on the PlayStation 4. It's a very, very, very delicate balance you have to strike when you're buying a new system. Now, I know this comes across extremely doomy and gloomy, and I don't like to come across like that in videos because, not because I don't like giving the negatives in something, I'm actually very critical in my videos the best I can be, but I also think it's very easy to rag on a system and just keep pointing out every single fault without ever coming up with a balanced point of view and in my opinion that's not really constructive that's just that's just pointless but in this case I, I'm just trying to illustrate how much of a gap there is between Nintendo's um, system in terms of where they want it to be and where it currently is now that doesn't mean that Nintendo are doomed however there have been fairly recent reports of the Wii U I'm sorry guys, that's just my battery crying for mercy um, on my cell phone. Let me just actually uh, mute that. I'm very naughty. I know I should have uh, muted that beforehand. I actually thought it was on vibrate. There we go. Uh, as I was saying, there have been recent reports that the 3DS is actually doing extremely well, not just in terms of hardware sales, but in terms of software as well. Once again, it's not just about how many hardware pieces you sell. It's all about the amount of software per system. After all, most of the time, you don't make that much money. Sometimes you actually make a loss. For example, Sony did with the PlayStation 3 and so on when you actually buy the system. The actual way you make the money is from the licenses of the system's uh, games. In other words, um, EA, buy, you know, EA want to make a new game on your system. They pay you a licensing fee to publish it. Once again, basic reason why one of the, well, one of the basic reasons that PC games are cheaper than consoles. So that's the other thing. 3DS is doing extremely well, that's a positive. We know that there are a number of games that are coming to the Wii U, and that's fantastic. The Unreal Engine does work on the Wii U, that's good. The problem is that it's all about scalability. The reality is, that let's say you are working on an engine, or you are working on a project that has very, very good graphics and very, very good AI and so on, and that is intrinsic. In other words, it's part and parcel of that game. The problem is you then have to start making decisions. Do I want to reduce the graphical fidelity and or physics and or AI and so forth to the point to make this run on a lesser equipped system and no matter which way you slice it, the Wii U is about the same technically as the Xbox 360 PS3, maybe slightly better. Um, in some regards, maybe slightly worse than others, but let's say around the same. Let's say even say 25% better. Well, the PS4 and Xbox 720 obviously are going to be a hell of a lot more than 25% better. This is the problem. Um, then you've got other issues such as the screen. And honestly speaking, I don't think it's a terrible spiral where Nintendo cannot recover. But once again, it's just an issue where they have to make the right moves and they really, really have to pull their head out their butts when it comes to the marketing side of things. And I really hope they do because I really do want the system to succeed. Anyway, I think that's just about it for this particular video. Hopefully you have enjoyed it and you'll stick with me. Obviously, just in a couple of weeks now, in fact, slightly less and I'm almost giddy as a schoolgirl, I tell you. 
we're going to be having lots of information on Xbox because it's going to be formally revealed and no doubt Sony and Nintendo both are kind of praying that they don't reveal anything that's too astounding. In other words, they probably are hoping it's going to be business as usual. They mo No doubt they have industrial espionage going on anyway, so they probably know more about it than certainly I do or the members of the public and press do. Anyway, um, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I will hopefully see you soon. Once again, if you check the description, you will find yourselves the link to the article where you can, of course, find all the relevant links and all of the uh, sources and so forth for what we've discussed here. So hopefully you've enjoyed the video and I will see you soon. Take care and bye for now.